So today I'm going to share with you how to make a knitting needle roll which also has pockets for your crochet hooks or cable um, lens or circular needles. So the roll is made of one piece of fabric as your base fabric which is 14 inches wide and this piece was um, 44 inches long. Then on the inside of the roll, you're going to make a pocket for the knitting needle, knitting needles. Just and I will show you how to do this in more detail in a minute. So for the inside of the bag, you're going to need two pieces of fabric, one for your crochet hooks. So this is a small internal pocket and a piece go on the top and enclose this edge here for your knitting needles and then the outside of the roll is going to have two pieces of fabric purely for decoration. So the first thing we need to do is to iron all our edges of our contrasting fabrics. Right so the ironing of the edges, let's start with the fabric for the outside of the roll this is our first piece of decorative fabric. We just need to fold in an edge. Now in terms of getting a straight line, if you've got a printed pattern, you can follow that pattern. Alternatively, if you decide you're going to make quite a few of these, if you're making them as gifts, you might want to get a slim piece of cardboard and place your cardboard in as a straight edge to press to. I used to make lots of these to sell on Etsy and I had cardboard cut to just this size. To be honest this going on the outside of the roll nobody's really going to notice if you've got a 100% straight line or not because it's rolled. That's the first piece ironed. Now let's iron the next for the outside. And this print isn't so easy to follow. If you're wondering, I'm using a wool pressing mat, which is a newly acquired purchase, and I love it. Right, I've got a slightly wobbly line there. So there we go. Oh, I've got a bit there. There we go. Right. So that's our outside decoration pressed. Now for the inside. So the small internal pocket here, we're going to fold this over twice. This is for the crochet hooks or um, round needles, whatever suits your needs really. Right, so I've got the straight line. See our piece of cardboard. In this case, we're saying sheet <laughs> booklet. It can give you a nice straight line ledge to press to. 
There we go. Right. Last piece, this goes at the top of your needles pocket. So this you just need to press in one, one turn. One side and two turns on the other because you're imposing a more edge. So, because my print is non directional, well, ironically, it looks a bit like knitting. Let's just look. Turn over the, as I say, one side twice. Think about the direction of your print because that double turn needs to be at the top. And we're going to stitch that in place just through the one there. So you see how you've enclosed your raw edge and you've added a bit of contrast to show you where the top of your pocket is. So now we've stitched that in place we're going to create the knitting needle channels. You can make these channels any width you like but I tend to have large knitting needles one end and thinner ones the other. It depends what kind of size of knitting needles you've got etc. On average my pockets are one and a half inches wide. See when I have half an inch, one and a half inch wide pocket. I've got some tailor's chalk. I'm going to mark my stitch line. And I'm going to go along making sure my stitch lines remain at right angles to the base of my fabric. It's going to be slightly wider on the end there. So now we've got our stitch lines marked. I'm just going to put the odd pin in. I would have got in the way of the quilter's ruler before. And I'm going to stitch with a thread that um, blends in with the base fabric. So I'm going to stitch all these lines from the contrasting top of the contrasting fabric here to the bottom. I'm going to back stitch here because this will be a um, point that gets quite a bit of wear. So you've sewn your channels and tied in your loose ends. Now we're going to make the crochet hook or cable needles or circular hooks. Circular hooks. Circular needle pockets. 
So your contrasting fabric that you double folded over, top stitch that down. Then we are going to mark further pockets. So you're following your line of stitching from your knitting needle pockets down. And again your tailor's torque and um, quilter's ruler is your friend. So I've made depends what you're using these for as to how many you're going to go for. But it's important you follow your knitting needle channels because otherwise you're going to make these too small for your knitting needles. So I've gone for one large skipping a line, second large skipping a line, and then four smaller. I'm going to pin this in place. and stitch from here, back stitching at the top again, down to the bottom. Once you've sewn your channels in for your smaller pockets, we are going to add our decorative fabric to the outside of the roll. So that goes on the other end. And I just do this by eye. So. It's one long piece of fabric that we're going to fold in half. So let's pin these on. It is, to give you a guide, four and a quarter inches from the bottom and then a half inch gap between the two fabrics. So I'm going to pin those on and then top stitch them in place. So now we've got the external decoration on, we're going to create, well I'll finish creating the roll. You need a piece of ribbon about 36 inches long, fold it, um, I'm just doing this by eye, let me measure it for you. So you need a slightly longer piece to go all the way round, and one piece, well it's one piece in all, folded. at 12 inches. Right, we want to keep this out of the way so we don't catch it in the side seams. Fold your fabric so it's right sides together. I like to do it from the back so I can see this overlap here. We need enough of an overlap so we can fold it over and fold it over again to enclose the raw edge when we're finished. Now, this is quite a short roll. I like to use my quilter's ruler again so I get a nice straight edge to stitch. That's at right angles to the top and the bottom of my case. If your base fabric was wider your roll would go a little bit further and you'd be able to get um, taller knitting needles in but this is the fabric I had to hand. Once you've sewn your side seams we're just going to trim these into the, to the edge of the seam being careful not to cut the stitches. It's just going to make turning the bag the right side out that much easier and I'm just going to trim my seam allowance too. Let's turn it the right side out. Right, here we go, it's coming together now. Actually there. So I'm gonna give that a good press and I'm sure I get my corners out neatly at the top here. Really neat press and then the last thing we're gonna do is pressing these edges at the bottom. So the final stage for finishing the knitting needle roll is turning in this edge and closing this raw edge here. 
so I've pressed in ever so fractionally into the middle you can't quite see that but rather than it being a hundred percent straight line there it's fractionally turned in at both sides I'm gonna we're going to turn in this here And then I'm going to turn it over again and pin. And pin along there and then top stitch in place. One finished knitting needle roll. So you can um, if you want you can accessorise by stamping numbers with fabric paint for your different size needles across here you could across here go for plain fabric and number them you could add ribbon lace make it a little bit more decorative so i crochet as much as i knit in fact i probably crochet more than i knit nowadays so i've got my crochet hooks um i've got my cable needles in here i can't remember what you call these but for when you putting some stitches one side so to use the roll fold over the top and you simply roll <coughs> wrap your ribbon round and tie These are a brilliant handy solution for storing all your knitting needles, etc. They also make great gifts. Enjoy making. <laughs>